Hello ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to show you how to take one of these and turn it into one of these. Let's get started. <laughs> I recommend watching this whole video uh, before you attempt the project, just so you know what you're getting yourself into. Uh, it's not a project for kids, um, and there's lots of little fragile things that can hurt people, so be aware of that. For this project, you'll need a monitor, some 3mm wide LED strips of your choosing, I've got a link in the description to the ones I used, an outlet to 12 volt adapter, I also left the link for that, a soldering iron, solder, hot glue, and some fairly thin wire. I got mine out of some old networking cable. So this one is an old MPC monitor. Pretty much any old-ish LCD monitor will work for this. You can even do something similar with old TVs. First, you need to order the thin LED strips. I'll put a link in the description to the ones I use. Uh, it's very important that they are 3 millimeters in width, um, and they can't be any wider than that. Otherwise, they won't fit in the panel. The ones I use are not addressable and they can't change color or brightness, but if you want to be able to do that, feel free to find your own just as long as they're 3 millimeters wide. You'll need to measure the length of the longest side of the monitor, which is usually the top and the bottom, and double that length. So for instance, my monitor was a 16 inch by 9 inch, and so I doubled 16 and got 32. So I ordered a 32 inch strip. A one meter strip is about long enough for that size. You'll need to put the monitor face down and remove every screw you see. Yours might let you remove the stand, which I highly recommend doing. Mine didn't, so I just worked around it. Then you'll have to spend several minutes getting the monitor apart. Usually the front panel comes off fairly quickly, but this one took forever and I eventually had to get into it with some brute force. Once you get it open, remove the components from the housing and set it aside. Then, once again, remove every screw you see. Now you'll probably see four screws holding the panel together on the edges. Take these out and make sure you keep track of them. We will need them at the end of the project. You'll most likely see two to four cables attaching the backlight panel to the main board. Unclip those when you see them. Okay, once you've taken out the actual display, now we need to start being careful not to damage the backlight. You'll see another thin circuit board attached to the back of the display panel. Unscrew that and pull off the large black glass panel. This is called the digitizer, and it contains all the pixels. You might need to remove the front bracket before the digitizer comes off. You can do this by using a flathead screwdriver or a metal spudger like mine to release the little clips. Set aside the digitizer and all the electronic components. You'll see that the four wires you detached earlier go into the backlight. These power the tiny fluorescent tubes inside. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second. Now separate the plastic guard from the metal backplate to reveal the inner workings of the backlight. You need to be careful with this layer because it can and will break. You need to unclip each buckle one at a time. After you do this, the diffusion layers will come off. Put these to the side with the matte side down. Make sure that no dust or little particles get on it. Under the diffusers, you'll see a large plexiglass panel with some kind of honeycomb or lattice pattern on it. This just helps the light spread evenly across the panel. It should come right out of the back plate. Take off any copper tape you see. There's a white plastic layer behind the plexiglass. Usually it's held in place by the metal brackets. I find it best to leave it attached as best you can. Now you need to very carefully remove those metal brackets from the top and bottom of your soon to be light panel. You need these to stay in the same shape so be very careful not to bend them at all. You'll see those tiny fluorescent tubes I was talking about. We need to take these out and replace them with those LED strips. Now you'll see why they have to be so thin. Try to get them out without breaking the fragile glass tubes because they shatter and they make a mess and they can actually be pretty dangerous. Make sure you throw them away really safely and keep them away from kids. I did all of this before actually ordering the LED strips so now I'll just fast forward to when they arrived. There's two ways to put in the LEDs. I'd already put the metal strips on and gotten the white plastic behind it without any wrinkles which take some time so I just slid the LEDs into the gap if you want though you can just put the LEDs on before you put the brackets back on before we do anything else you'll have to get out that thin wire cut off two fairly long strips I recommend one of them being red and the other some other color now measure the short side of the plexiglass panel add about an inch to that length and that's how long the two thin wires should be then cut the LED strip to the length of the long side of the panel if anything make sure it's a little shorter than that side not longer 
For the other end of the strip, I usually wait to cut it until later. Now it's time to fire up the soldering iron. This is why I said you should watch the whole video before attempting, because if you want to do this, you need to have at least a little bit of soldering experience. I have a decent bit of experience and I still suck at it, as you'll see in a bit. Strip the ends of the wires a few millimeters, tin the pads and the wires, and solder the red to the positive and the other color to the negative. Then use these wires to extend the strip onto the next piece. That way, the two strips can go along the top and the bottom and only use one core for power. At this point, remember to test the LEDs by connecting them to the 12 volt adapter. If they light up, you're good to go. If not, you need to check your solder connections, and if you're sure they aren't the problem, you might need to replace a section of LEDs like I did on another one of these. Now very carefully reassemble the backlight. If you don't remember how it goes together, the plexiglass sits on the backplate with a thin white plastic under it. Then the diffusion layers sit on top of that. Wipe off any dust that got on them. You might have to trial and error a little bit to get the diffusers in the right order, but the main thing is that the matte frosty layer goes on top. Then clip the plastic bracket in place, being very careful not to put pressure on the thin wires or the main wires. You might need to break off tiny portions of the plastic layer just to make room for the wires, and that's okay as long as the actual clips are intact. Then put the metal front bracket on top again. Make sure that all the wires have enough wiggle room to not get cut off. Again, you'll probably have to trial and error this a little bit. Test the panel again and wiggle it around. If it fails, you probably pinch some wires with the metal and it's causing it to short. Open it back up and fix it. Once you've got all that worked out, you've almost got a finished light panel. Remember those four screws you took out of the edges? It's time to find those and put those back in. They provide structure support as well as being a method to hang this on the wall or whatever you want to do with it. I use some more of the thin wire because mine is pretty strong. I twist it around in such a way that it'll shine down over my desk. And just like that, you've got a finished light panel. Hope you enjoyed that or at least learned something from it if you decide to attempt this or you have any questions leave a comment down below and i'll probably answer it maybe leave a like subscribe perhaps and i'll see you in the next one